Having just murdered his master to assume the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Plagueis committed himself to his work of midi-chlorian manipulation in order to discover the secret of eternal life and carry out the Sith Grand Plan himself. Running into a wall in his research, realizing that the midi-chlorians were resisting his manipulations at every turn, Plagueis' thoughts went to the tales of the ancient Sith Lords, handed down through holocrons from Sith Lord to Sith Lord. These accounts of the ancient Sith described feats with the Force that Plagueis could only dream of. For example, the Dark Lord recognized the accomplishments of Sith Lord Naga Sadow, who lived roughly 5,000 years before Plagueis and who was said to have used the Force to manifest hundreds of illusions across the galaxy at once. Plagueis also recognized the feats performed by the powerful Sith Lord Exar Kun, roughly 4,000 years before Plagueis, where an Exar Kun was powerful enough with the Force so as to dominate the minds of the entire Galactic Senate at once, to bend them to his will. And finally, although Plagueis didn't necessarily know him by name, he was aware of the amazing feats of Sith Emperor Vitiate, again millennia before Plagueis' reign, wherein his immense dark side power was able to warp the atmosphere of planets. And yet, even after Darth Bane's Order of the Sith Lords had been gaining strength in the shadows for 1,000 years, Plagueis recognized that the force powers of the ancient Sith were beyond his grasp. This forced Plagueis to wonder if these ancient Sith accounts were true, or perhaps if the dark side of the force had been more prominent in the previous eras. However, we do know that the ancient Sith did have more powerful force abilities than the Sith of Darth Bane's era, right up to the end of the lineage with Darth Sidious, abilities that made force lightning look like child's play. In this video expose, I will describe why modern Sith, starting with the Bane era, were not able to perform the incredible force abilities used by the ancient Sith. It's important to start with the era of Sith beginning with the new Sith Wars, roughly around 2000 years before Sidious would rise to become Emperor of the Galactic Empire, an era that clearly separates the Bane lineage from powerful ancient Sith like Marka Ragnos, Vitiate, Naga Sadow, and Exar Kun. Looking to reclaim Sith rule and the glory of the earlier eras, the Sith engaged the Jedi and Republic on all fronts. The successes of the Sith in the new Sith Wars, which lasted for roughly 1,000 years, pushed the New Republic to the brink, testing its resolve as it entered into a new Dark Age defined by decline. However, instead of ushering in a new era of Sith rule of the galaxy, wherein the Sith would rise to match the power of the ancient Sith Lords, the opposite would happen. The Sith were plagued by constant infighting among the Order's most powerful members, fracturing the Empire into numerous pieces. The period between 2000 and 1000 years before Sidious' rise was not defined by the re-emergence of Sith as powerful as those from the previous era. Instead, the Sith were fractured as weakened Sith Lords were happy to claim their own personal domains throughout the galaxy, small tracts that they ruled as warlords. Instead of trying to reclaim the power of the ancient Sith Lords, the Sith operating in the era of the new Sith Wars were weakened by infighting and happy to rule over whatever meager holdings they could claim. This era between the ancient Sith Lords of Ragnos, Revan, and Vitiate, and Bane's Order of the Sith Lords would ultimately come to be defined by the organization known as the Brotherhood of Darkness. The Brotherhood reorganized the Sith Empire into a united order that sought to end the infighting that plagued the Sith for centuries. But the importance of the Brotherhood isn't just that it represents a period in which the Sith had become weak, preventing their ability to reclaim and match the powerful force abilities of the ancient Sith. It shows a complete rejection of the teachings of the ancient Sith, wherein the Sith Lords prior to the Bane era turned their back on the teachings of the Order's most powerful historical members. This is demonstrated through no better example than the rise of Darth Bane, who recognized that the Sith Order had grown weak due to their rejection of the ancient Sith teachings gradually over the course of roughly two and a half millennia. The natural result of this path was the Brotherhood of Darkness, a Sith Order defined by equality and cooperation among Sith Lords, which was clearly weakening the Sith in the eyes of Bane. But more importantly, the Brotherhood would also come to be defined not only by their rejecting the teachings of the ancient Sith, but the suppression and circumventing of these teachings in their entirety. 
As Bain would eventually learn through his study of the archives at the Sith Academy on Korriban, the teachings of the ancient Sith, including the techniques that would produce their most powerful force abilities, were lost throughout the era of Sith infighting during the previous millennium. The more Bane studied the archives, occurring roughly 1,000 years before the rise of Sidious, and what should be pointed out as containing only the most basic teachings of the ancient Sith, the more Bane recognized just how far the Order had fallen, and why none within the Order could even approximate the power and force abilities of these preceding Sith Lords. Having found the archives on Korriban to contain immense wisdom from the ancient Sith, full of their teachings and interpretations of the dark side, Bane confronted the headmaster of the Korriban Academy named Cordus. Bane tried to convince Cordus that the archives should be implemented into the study of the Sith on Korriban. However, Cordus would hear none of it. Instead of accepting Bane's opinion that the archives contained valuable wisdom from the ancient Sith, Cordus told the future Dark Lord of the Sith that they were merely relics from the past, with their teachings being from a time that had long vanished. Although Bane could recognize that the Order had changed, he still saw the knowledge of the ancient Sith worthy of study. Cordus, on the other hand, viewed the ancient Sith with contempt, merely dust and bone, and their knowledge should share a similar fate. Cordus's position is important because it represents a culmination of views the Sith Lords had during the millennium of the new Sith Wars. The modern Sith, particularly those of the Brotherhood of Darkness, saw the ancient Sith as relics of a previous age. Therefore, the powerful force techniques that they mastered were not passed down to the modern Sith Lords who dominated the Order thousands of years after Revan, Vitiate, and Naga Sadow. But the teachings of the ancient Sith, particularly the powerful force abilities they knew, were locked away not just within the manuscripts within the archives, but within their holocrons. Because Bane read the archives, he knew exactly where to look for this information. Having traveled to the planet of Lahan within the Unknown Regions, Bane found the holocron of Darth Revan within the Temple of the Ancients. Within the novel Darth Bane Path of Destruction, we see exactly how cut off the modern Sith of Bane's era were from the powerful Sith of Revan's era, roughly two and a half millennia earlier. As Bane opened the holocron and dove into the teachings of Revan, the novel states, To Bane, it seemed the teachings contained within the single holocron surpassed those of the Academy's entire archives. Revan had discovered many of the rituals of the ancient Sith, and as the holocron's avatar explained their nature and purpose, Bane could barely wrap his mind around their awesome potential. Some of the rituals were so terrible, so dangerous to attempt even for a true Sith Master, that he doubted he would ever dare to use them. Yet he dutifully copied them down on sheaves of films, preserving them so he could study them in greater depth later. Just as Bane suspected, the Sith Order had grown weak, not just in their connection to the Dark Side, but also in their knowledge of the Force abilities that were mastered previously by the Sith Lords of the earlier eras, because the Order turned its back on the teachings of the ancient Sith. The Sith Lords in the era of Bane were content to hold on to their meager territories and simply rule as warlords, not rulers of the entire galaxy. Given what he learned from Darth Revan's holocron, Bane would start a new era that accepted the teachings of the ancient Sith, an era that would come to rediscover the powerful rituals and abilities that were mastered by them. One such ritual was known as a Thought Bomb, a devastating ancient ability that Bane would use to annihilate the entirety of the Brotherhood of Darkness. But then it must be asked, if Darth Bane rediscovered many of these ancient rituals and began a lineage wherein for 1,000 years the Sith grew in power and stronger in the dark side, why didn't we see these abilities in the era of Darth Plagueis, or Darth Sidious, or Darth Vader? In part 2, we'll look at the history of the Sith that caused a tragic fracture in Bane's Order of the Sith Lords, resulting in the loss of knowledge that had been accumulated in the centuries following Bane. So there we have it! How the knowledge of the ancient Sith regarding their most powerful force abilities was lost but then revived by Bane. I hope everyone had a tremendous Christmas and I can't thank you enough for your support of me, the non-canon expert. It's great to be back and I hope you all enjoy the legends focused topics. Tomorrow we'll look at this question specifically from the timeline of Bane to Sidious, 
and we'll also take a look at and oh my god Kylo Ren's tie silencer in a separate video. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive hangouts and book discussions. If not for me... For giving the people what they want...